They've won two national championships, as you mentioned, and 22 NCAA tournament games since he arrived. Billy's one of six coaches in history to play and coach in the Final Four. And Tyus wins the tip, the Gators control, and we are underway. Game one of our triple header here for the BB&T Classic, all benefiting the Children's Charities Foundation. Six teams, all distinctive styles, as Florida looks to snap back after losing to Central Florida the other night, a game they expected to win. It snapped the four-game winning streak for the Gators. Marcus Jordan, son of Michael, went off on him there. Now, good ball movement inside for the easy lay in there for Tyus, and it's 2-0 Gators who will press. And Florida's going to come with this pressure because American has trouble sometimes with its ball handling, using Nick Hendra to help bring it up against that pressure. Hendra moves it back up top. Now, American will be very patient offensively. They don't look to necessarily use the entire shot clock, but what they want to do is make sure they get a good shot, even if it takes the entire shot and clock, and there's they a turnover. they didn't want is a turnover. Exactly right, Jim. Inside it goes. Macklin with the spin. Off the rim, no good, but a whistle and a foul. Right now, we're going to take a look at the BMW of Fairfax. Keys to the game. What do you got for us? Well... Florida wants to jump on AU early to establish their superiority. As you said, Southeastern Conference team, a team that competes for national championships. They don't want this game to stay close. The crowd's going to be coming in throughout, and they want to make sure that they get American down early and keep them down. Obviously, for AU, we mentioned the pressure that Florida is going to bring. They've got to get into their offense and get good shots on every possession. This game's about miles per hour, Jim. Florida wants to go 100. As Jeff Jones said, his team can't go 100, even if it wanted to. <laughs> well, Macklin makes one out of two. He struggled from the line on the year in a 3-0 Gators lead early on. As Luptak try to work the offense for the Eagles. Florida is very aggressive defensively. A lot of hands, good feet. There's a nice lay-in to the basket. Steve Lumpkins can work the inside very effectively for AU. He's left-handed, so sometimes the defender will turn the wrong way against him, and that's an advantage for him. Macklin misses. Here comes American. Yes. The Eagles now with a chance to get the lead, or tie the game, rather. And there's a shot from three, and it goes. So Troy Brewer hits. Troy Brewer transfer from Georgia, sat out last season, and he gives American a dimension from the outside that they really lacked last year. Their only consistent outside shooter was Vlad Moldovanu, who has to be on the inside at least some of the time because of his size. So 5-3, American has the lead early on. Irving Walker getting an inside to Tyus. Save the turnover there, nicely done. A nice catch by Tyus to keep that ball alive. Walker creating, and there's a travel. Talking to Billy Donovan before the game, asking him about the loss to Central Florida, he said that he just felt as if his three seniors are trying too hard to get to the next level when they're not at the next level yet. And what he's preached the last few days is enjoy college basketball. That's what you're playing right now. If you do well at this level, the next level will come. Shot inside. Uh, Moldovanu won't go. Nice defense by Tyus there, not buying the shot fake. And Florida in transition. An offensive foul will be called on Walker. And you can see the quickness of Florida getting down the court. What Jeff Jones was hoping to do was prevent that transition by making shots. Unfortunately, that time, it didn't work out. Good job by Dick Hendrick getting in front of Walker. And when you see a player put his head down that way, he's almost always not going to get the call. And good call by Rick Randall to call the charge. And again, the pressure by Florida. The Eagles break it. Maldivenu nearly had it knocked away. Good pass inside. Good ball movement. And Lumpkin's able to answer what you need to do against pressure defense. Make them pay by getting that open shot. Good Eric, ball movement. Sorry, Jim. Eric Murphy now in the game for the Gators. Boynton inside. Murphy, a little short, rebounded nicely by the Eagles. Steve Luptak 
running the point, got that rebound down low. That's as close to a fast break as you're going to see out of AU most of the day there. Wisely coming back up top. There's a three attempt, and it's in and out. Those, those are shots they're going to have to hit when they get them to have a chance to compete in this game. We'll attack one of the senior starters for Jeff Jones. Macklin the spin, and he gets it to fall. Pretty tough to stop that shot, especially when he goes up left-handed. Uh, he should know these rims since he played at Georgetown for two years before transferring to Florida. Moldovanu, he loves the perimeter, misses on his first three-point attempt, and here come the Gators again in transition. Moldovanu walks in the building and he sees a green light go on. <laughs> Moldovanu out of Romania. And That's just tough post play. First he beats you with the left hand, then he beats you with the right hand. And he's too big and strong to be handled one-on-one -on -one in the post. American almost has to double when he catches it down there. Macklin already with five points, five of the seven for Florida. There's Brewer, the shot, it won't go, but a whistle and a foul, so America is going to the line. Well, interesting game early on. It looked like Fargo was going to pull away, but Americans right back at it. Tyler, who's usually a very effective and efficient free throw shooter, at 13 of 15 coming in, but he misses on the first. No legs in that shot at all. That time he followed through with his legs. So he hits on the second, and here come the Gators. Again, the half-court game is what American wants to play. Showing a little 1-3-1 one zone here. Scotty Wilbekin now in the game. He's running the point. As Billy Donovan has a deep team, and he utilizes his players. Parsons for three. In, out, and back in again. And again, out again. Finnegan, I think the immortal Les Kiter used to call that. Daniel Munoz now in the game for the Eagles. is tied up by a couple of Gators and calls timeout. Danny Munoz, Florida kid, coming off the bench to play. Of the Gators, this could right. wear down American as the game goes on. Especially at those guard spots. I mean, Danny Munoz dribbling right into a double team there coming up the court was not what Jeff Jones wanted to see when he first came in the game. Maldivado has been quiet early on. Munoz being bothered there by Walker. You see the defensive intensity for Florida. It's what Billy Donovan preaches. Maldivado inside, and he gets the roll. That's the post-up move Jeff Jones wants to see a little more of from Maldivado. He's averaging 21 points a game. Very streaky player. Can make six in a row, miss six in a row. Right now, the pace is the way AU wants it, though. And inside goes Murphy. Nicely done. Off the glass. So Eric Murphy out of Rhode Island found his way to the Gators. Billy Donovan can recruit the Northeast. There's a steal. Lumpkins handling the ball too far from the basket. Walker sets up for the three, and it's off the rim, but rebounded inside. Fighting is Parsons. He'll come back up top. And what I mean when I say Lumpkin's handling it too far from the basket, he's going to have to be available as an outlet against the press, but he needs to catch and pass, not catch and dribble. Will begin trying to get inside, instead hands off. See, Americans staying in the man the man it's the defense Jeff Jones prefers. They, they may go to some zone throughout the game just to give a different look. They showed that 1-3-1 one, one look on one possession, you're right, and then went right back to the man to man Walker penetrating, finds Murphy, and the shot is blocked. Lumpkins goes up and blocks it. So here comes American in transition. Lumpkins, very good shot blocker. Again, being left-handed helps because his left hand goes to the right-handed shooter. Another turnover, that's a foul on Moldovaner. So the foul called. And well, the Bainu, that is one player as we get a look at the block on the other end. And Lumpkins reaching with that left hand. Being a left, being, you know how being a left-handed hitter in baseball is such an advantage? Being a left-handed basketball player is an advantage because players instinctively play you right-handed even when they're told in the scouting report that you're lefty. Boynton now in the backcourt with Wilbekin. Wilbekin trying to get it down low and he throws it away. Well, Blicky picked it up. 
Eagles in transition. Brewer has been quiet early on. Molivainu driving in. Wild shot, and it's short. Good help there by Florida on defense. Will you get now in there? And you see how Billy Donovan's even the minute out. The scorer's table will be busy all afternoon. And Billy Donovan wanted a timeout. He didn't like something he saw there, on the, and particularly, again, on the defensive end of the floor. They didn't play good defense the last two games against Columbia, which they lost without Vlad Moldovanu, who had concussion symptoms, and then Wednesday at West Virginia. Well, Billy Donovan has his say. Gators back with the ball and holding a two-point lead. I think he wanted to get Macklin back in the game, too. Macklin, you see how hard he's working inside to get position, but instead, there's the drive in the bucket. And Parsons, Parsons getting in there. You might remember him last year, Jim. He threw in about a 70-footer at the buzzer to beat NC State. And a travel inside as tied up was Rablicki and nowhere to go. So a four-point game, a timeout on the start. The first year, the three-point shot. Rick Pitino at Providence really figured out before any other coach what the three-point shot could do for you. And Billy Donovan, Pop Jones, and, and Delray Brooks led that team to a sh really shocking Final Four appearance, upsetting Georgetown in the round of eight to get there. Pointing inside, dishes off. What a pass, and you get goes up strong. Will you get a freshman born in Bordeaux, France? And found his way to Gainesville. Parsons and Macklin have combined for 12 points already, so the two 6'10 guys down low are making their presence felt. American doesn't have an answer. Guards are doing a very good job of getting them the ball down low in good shooting position. Where you're right, they're tough to guard. Moldovanu for three, and it's in and out. And that's a shot he's got to hit for American. They get the rebound and another possession. Rare offensive rebound there for the Eagles by Rublicki, who just came in a couple minutes ago. Hendra bothered there by Boynton. Brewer thought he had a shot, and just as quickly it was taken away. The other thing about American is they seem to have difficulty creating their shot. They're okay off screens, but creating their shot on their own, they're having trouble. Not a lot of guys. There's Lubtak forcing it, going left and shooting right at the buzzer. Speaking of creating a shot. And he gets it to fall. It's a two-point game. Created out of desperation, but it worked. It's too far from the basket. Macklin got a little over-eager there early in the shot clock. But you're right, though. You don't see a lot of players on the Patriot League level who can score off the dribble consistently. Well, the Vayner down low and immediately double team. Got to stay out of those corners. And he's able to hit it off the leg of the Gators as Macklin had it go off. Well, today's game is brought to you by eHarmony.com. eHarmony Love begins here. I'm not touching that. At the Verizon Center. <laughs> well, you love basketball. I it do, begins here. But we're both happily married men, so. Brewer inside. Oh. Tough shot. Macklin got in the way. That time yeah. Macklin did go left with Lumpkins. Transition. The shot goes up. It's blocked. Rebound goes in and a foul. So crashing the offensive boards, paying dividends as Parsons not only gets the bucket, he'll go to the line. Then Moldovanu came with the help, which was the good news, that he got there to help, and so did Lumpkins. But the problem is they're both on the one side of the basket, and the rebound goes to the weak side, and there's nobody there for American, and Parsons collects it. Parsons already with nine points, make it ten. He's perfect four for four at his field goals. And now the Gators can get that press working after the foul shot. Parsons, one of the three seniors that Billy Donovan felt was just trying too hard in that Central Florida game. Steve Luptak out of Indiana. He's running the point. Simon McCormick in the game for the first time. And Moldovanu, another three, won't go. He's got to make that shot, Jim, that wide open. 
Valley Oop attempt, nearly thrown away, but instead it'll be a three point shot that's too strong for Kenny Boynton. Moldovanu with a nice pass, the dish, the foul, and down hard goes Troy Brewer. And you described that right. Brewer went down hard. I don't think that was a vicious foul. I think that was just trying to make a defensive play from behind, and the angle caused Brewer to go down hard. Fortunately, he seems okay. A little shaken up, though, walking away to try to get his senses back. And that's good officiating in from behind. Sorry. Yeah, that was good officiating because sometimes officials will see a player go down that hard and just instinctively call a flagrant foul. That was not a flagrant foul. So Troy Brewer out of Gaithersburg, Maryland, to the line for a couple, and he gets the fortunate bounce. We Shooters roll. We can't say home court bounce because this is a neutral site for these teams. American is located probably about eight miles from here. Ne neither of these teams took advantage of the shoot around today. It was uh, so early. Yeah, it was a, a difficult attempt for the committee <laughs> to schedule six teams shooting around when the first game was to begin at 2.40. I guess I take the blame for that. I yeah, take I the blame for both things. That's why I said the committee now. I didn't want to. I know. We're lucky to have these six teams here, though. And we have to remember these are youngsters, and getting up at 5 a.m. for a shoot-around is not something that they look forward to, so as a result, both these teams skipped it. We all know about teenagers getting up early. Point and short, ball knocked out of bounds, and it's going to go for the American Eagles as it's tipped out. About the depth and the balance of Florida, Parsons averages 10 points a game. He's already got 10. Yeah, and that stat four for four from uh, the floor. And then Vlad Moldovano, I talked about him being a streak shooter. Well, he's one for six. That's not the streak Jeff Jones had in mind. And the one shot he made was on a post-up move. He's 0 for three from outside the three-point line. Munoz back in the game running the point. You can see how active Florida is defensively, in particular with their football. They're going to extend every chance they get, try to create a turnover and a quick bucket. Shot clock down to three. Moldovanu. I think he got that off. And they're going to count it. That looked late to me as well. So a three-point shot for Moldovanu finally hits one. Well, it might not be a home court, but it might be a home court shot clock operator or the officials let it go. I would have at least... I don't think that's one you can go to on replay. You can go to a replay whether it's a two or a three. Good call there by Steve Olsen on the travel. Irving Walker trying to get the step. And Billy Donovan didn't argue. I'm surprised. See, we can't really tell from here. Fox at zero there, but he could have released it. But I thought it was late. But AU needed that break because that's Moldovano's first three. And now a chance to tie or take the lead. It's 19-17. Again, pressure defense, and he went back court. He did. Foot stepped over. Again, Munoz needs to avoid dribbling into double teams. That was Kenny Boynton. Are you Blake back just in the game? Passed me a note saying Billy Donovan knows about threes. He sure does. <laughs> so I said he was part of that Providence team that more or less invented taking advantage of the new three-point line in 86-87. Back in the early days of the Big East. Pitino went from there to the New York Knicks, and Billy Donovan played for him with the Knicks. Five turnovers for American. And a three-point shot is too strong as Boynton can't get it to fall. That was, in fact, during a stretch, Jim, when the Big East sent three teams to the Final Four in 85 with Villanova beating Georgetown in the final. And then in 87, Providence and Syracuse both won. And there's a deep three. Walker gets it to fall. That's an NBA three in an NBA building. Munoz bothered. Puts it ahead to Moldovanu. There he did a good job of recognizing the double team and getting finding an open teammate. And this type of pressure that Florida is putting against American, you can't simulate this in practice. Not with these kind of athletes, that's for sure. Spin move by Lumpkins, it's rejected. That was just good defense by Murphy. Stood his ground, didn't go for the fake. 
So a Walker there back up. One of the lines about Walker is he plays so much better when he stays in control. When he isn't wild, he stayed in control there. The lane closed down, he backed out. That's just a little more experience. Having now been a starter for two years, came off the bench as a freshman. Kenny Boynton was a starter from the first minute he got here. Billy Donovan won a recruiting battle with Mike Krzyzewski to get him. Troy Brewer all the way off the glass. Good pass, good move. Scotty Wilbekin back in the game. And that's what Jeff Jones has told his players. If you see something open, go for it, but don't force things. Murphy all the way in, and a whistle and a foul. Good play by Mo Gavain, who's stepping in to take that charge. And you can almost always tell which way the call's going to go based on the player's body language. Murphy leaning forward there. That's the force I was talking about. You know, Brewer trying to go end to end, but the throw too far as Hendra throws it over his head, trying to break that press. Here's what they say in the NFL now. He didn't get enough air on it. So if the name Hendra's familiar to you, Nick's dad, Tony Hendra, very well-known comedian, author, and and Nick and Tony Hendry are actually writing a book together about their experiences as performers in different areas. One is an athlete, one on the stage. Parsons inbounding to Boynton. Here is Wilbekin. Under five to go in the first half now. Inside, nice Murphy with a basket and a foul. So Parsons having a big first half. Let's check in with Byron Kerr. Well, Jim, you talked about it, the 10 points for Parsons. You know, he was one for nine against Central Florida, and Billy Donovan talked about maybe shaking up the lineup for this game or later on after the frustrating loss to Central Florida. This is his first double-figure game in the past four games, so maybe that'll be good for Donovan in changing his mind. All right, Byron, so Murphy completes the three-point play. That is huge because now it's a six-point advantage. The old-fashioned three-point play. I believe this is the 24th season of the shot clock. The brainchild of Ed Stites, who was NCAA rules chairman back then. Shot is too strong by Hendra. And the Gators again in transition. Their kind of game. Now, Billy Donovan has been looking for his team offensively for better decision-making, and we saw some of it there. Eric Murphy had the open shot. He got the ball, and he hits it. Here's where Jeff Jones might need a timeout, but he, they used one because of the double team Munoz dribbled into, and he doesn't want to use the second one here unless he has to, and the next whistle now will be a TV timeout if they can get to that. Eight-point lead for the Gators, their largest. Maldivenu in the corner for three, it's too strong. And a whistle. That's a silly and foul a by foul. Brewer. So a foul on American as we go to break. 27-19, American trailing Florida. A great player for Gary Williams, Chris Naki, came back home to play at AU, later became AU's head coach. And Sometimes schools at that level need transfers to bolster their program because kids go away in Brewers from Gaithersburg, Maryland, and then realize they're better off coming back home. Parsons runs down the loose ball, so the Gators with another look. There's a three for Parsons. A little too strong, and he finally misses. Well, AU went to a zone there and pushed Parsons a little bit outside his range. Simon McCormick in the game, he has the ball, zero. And he's not a zero, he's been a real contributor <laughs> off the bench. I'm surprised it took this long for him to get in, actually. Munoz driving in the lane, he's in there with the big guys, and he realized that he traveled. Yeah. You drive in there and you look up, and there's Macklin, 6'10". <laughs> when, when you get in the lane, when you come to a stop, you need to have already have made your decision on what you're going to do. You can't stand there and look around and say, okay, now what do I do? And that was the mistake that Munoz made there. Murphy's back in for the Gators. Walker's open. Boynton. Inside they go to Macklin. Back up. Boynton for three. Too strong. And pulled down by American Nick Hendra. 
straight possessions where AU's gone zone and Florida's kind of quick shot from three-point range. Well, the venue backs away and again too strong. He's having a tough time with the shot. But he's got to keep shooting. Two for nine. Well, fans would like to take this moment to let you know that the new patient care tower at Franklin Square Hospital Center is open. See for yourself at lookinsidethetower.org. McCormick runs down the Aaron Pass. He's going to run the point right there. He's not a natural point guard, so he gives it up to Lovetak. Lovetak again inside, forced back outside. I drove inside and saw what was waiting for me. I'd go outside too. Molineo has it knocked away, but a foul. Macklin got him from behind. It's funny how if you ever sit in on a practice, you hear coaches say, play defense with your feet, not with your hands. Don't reach, don't reach. Players listen, but then instinct takes over during the game. You see the ball, you reach for it. Patrick Young will replace Macklin, who goes to the bench with the foul. So yet another freshman coming in for Billy Donovan. Now Billy Donovan showing a little zone. Shot won't go, and there is skying for the rebound, Patrick Young. Line drives are good in baseball, not when you're shooting a basketball. The foul on Macklin, his second, so he heads out. Closing in on a minute 30 to go in the half. Florida can afford foul trouble more than AU can because of the depth that you've talked about. Being a little bit more selective this trip down the court. Pass inside for Tyus, knocked away. Three seconds on the shot clock. So now this is a play that they've worked on in practice. Patrick Young had an open shot, elected not to take it. Tyus goes up and it's off the rim. It was good basketball by both teams. Good screen to set Tyus up, good defense by AU reacting. Malavedu will get the foul called on Patrick Young. The 13th McDonald's All-American to sign with Florida since Billy Donovan took over. It's only six fouls, so they'll inbound it. And again, what happened there on the foul? Reach for the ball. Under a minute to play, first half. Well, the Bainu had it knocked away, and he somehow got it to fall. Maybe it took a little off for him. The three shots he, he's made are probably the three worst looks he's had all day. Tyus gets it outside, and Irving Walker hits. It'll hurt you if you leave him open enough times. Shot clock is off. American can hold if they elect to for the final shot they certainly should do here. Nine point lead for the Gators. AU's ball to start in the second half. And a whistle inside and a foul will be called on Simon McCormick who somehow out of control is called for a foul. I think he was trying to set a screen and he got caught moving on that screen. Again, that's really a a bad foul to take because now it gives Florida a chance to get the last shot and maybe get a double-digit lead. Four seconds. Shot goes up from the corner. Too short, and it won't go. So, American trying to hang, but a bit of a spurt for the Gators late in that first half. Other than A, don't dribble into those double teams against the pressure, which created some turnovers. And B, they got to make the shots when they're there. They had open looks at shots that they normally can make that just didn't go down. They need to keep the game at this pace. Florida is going to want to try to pick up the pace if it can at any point, get to 100 miles an hour as we spoke about early in the game. By the way, Larry Scheidt can handle 
be interviews because he was a head coach both at Wyoming and at Clemson. And Billy Donovan would tell you that his coming here to Florida in 2005-2006 was a key to their becoming a national champion. He runs the defense, basically. He's a defensive coordinator. Always good for a head coach to have somebody that understands what it is and takes to be a head coach. Absolutely. And Billy has complete faith in Larry as he should. Billy Donovan, amazing, already his 15th season with the Gators. They used to call him Billy the Kid, now they call him Billy the Coach. <laughs> Maldivenu, another miss, and there's a foul reaching over the top. That was Nick Hendra, and another one of those reach fouls. Yeah, just again, instinct, you're boxed out, you reach for the well, ball, and the next thing you hear is a whistle. This first, his first the Florida with its starters on the floor to begin the second half. Billy Donovan returned his starters from last year's team. Only the second time that has happened for Billy Donovan. Last time it happened, he won a national championship in 2007. Tyus the turnaround, won't go. Rebounded by Lumpkin, so here comes American. And that was Parsons. knocked away by Parsons, but his foot was on the line. Exactly. Came around to make the steal from behind, but stepped out of bounds in the process. Rick Randall caught it. Set. Joachim Noah Group won the national championship in 2006, and then they all decided to come back, which in college basketball these days, as you know, is rare. Well, the Bayou again cannot get it to go. Again, that's the kind of shot I was talking about. He's squared up, it's his shot, just doesn't go in. And when he ventures away from the basket, that hurts them rebounding inside. And there for the easy board was Macklin. Tyus working down low, oh, strong power hook off the glass for Tyus. Oldebane who could not guard him one-on-one. -on -one. If the ball gets in there, they've either got to double him or they might as well start to inbound after the basket. Troy Brewer has been quiet in this game. Dangerous time of game for American, down by 11. They need to get something going offensively here very soon or this game's going to get away. Look back to Hendra. Too strong. There's Parsons for the board. He's doing it all. Hendra's been quiet all day. Walker for three, and he timeout. gets it to fall. Jeff Jones needs a timeout here. And immediately into the full court pressure. Well, he's not going to take it. I'm a little surprised. There's another mismatch. You see Tyus coming out on Brewer. So height disadvantage there. And tie it up, and the possession's going to go to Florida. That's it. Another turnover. Jeff Jones trying to be patient with his team here. Let them work their way through this. You know, again, when you're in December, you're coaching to win every game you play, but you're also coaching looking toward conference season, especially when you're in the Patriot League, which is a one-bid league, and everything that makes your season rise or fall is based on those conference games in January, February, and March. Tyus inside got away with an elbow off the glass too strong. Gators on a 13-2 run, but here come the Eagles. All the way down off the glass, won't go. Nice try by Hendra, and here comes Tyus. It's a three-on-one. Good passing to Tyus for the slam. Now we'll see a timeout. So Tyus running the floor. You see the jumping ability there. Oh, did he get a star award from the Children's Charities Foundation for his contributions to this event the last 10 years. Of course, Gary Williams received that award several years ago. He's been involved since day one. They've both done a tremendous work for charity in their hometown. Walla Bayou in the corner. Let's check in quickly with Byron Kerr. All right, Jim, uh, Jeff Jones during the timeout said, don't wait for somebody else to do the job. It's your job, it's your job, it's your job. He pointed to all five players and said, everybody's got to get together to try to come back. I'd like to see them get Lumpkin some looks down low here. Uh, that one there, knocked away by Parsons. Good hustle, but again, he was on the end line. Again, they got it to the right guy. Steve Lumpkin can score inside. But that was just good defense by Parsons. You talked throughout the game about Florida's quickness, quick hands there by Parsons. A little debate on the shot clock here because they reset. Yeah, there's a foul. That's going to be a Alex Tyus hold as he tried to 
get in the way of the inbounds pass, and all he did was he grabbed Moldovanu. If he hadn't grabbed him, it would have been a layup. So that's the definition of probably a good foul. It is very impressive watching, in particular, the guards of Florida play defense. There's an opening, and then it's just as quickly a race because of the footwork. They, they close so well. Brewer over Parsons, he gets it to fall. That's a tough shot over a 6'9 guy with long arms. And Brewer now with 11 points. Brewer's going to be a very good player for AU in the Patriot League. Ian Moldovano and Lumpkins should be able to score. Florida answers the other way. Macklin with that baby hook. Macklin, a redshirt senior. They have experience in the starting lineup especially. But then again, Boynton's only a sophomore. And as Brewer again can't get it to fall. Another wide open shot. Boynton's what you call an old sophomore though. Nice play by Hendry there, getting the loose ball. You know, the ball squirted out to him. Here come the Gators. And Florida now content once they're in half court. There was a little walk that Walker got away with. Could take a little bit of time. Inside the Macklin for the slam. Good patience and a good look there by Alex Tyus. Nine points. Classic high-low. Look there by Tyus, big guy to big guy. Munoz back in the game for American. And the three-point shot goes for Hendrick. See his offensive game coming around. Hendrick's the guy who's who was a valuable guy coming off the bench on AU's back-to-back -back Patriot League teams a couple years ago. Struggled a little bit, asked to score more. Very good defensively, very athletic, but not a natural score. Uh, timeout on the floor, 41-29. Alex Tyus and the Gators have the lead. Unselfish play and good passing. The action from game one of our triple header and then preview game two with Navy and George Washington getting set to go out. Alex Tyus will go to the line. And he makes the first. Very good free throw shooter for a big guy. Note those three assists too. Jim Florida has got 17 baskets, 13 assists on the 17 baskets and that's Really good passing, not just by the guards, but by the big guys. And again, more full court pressure by Florida. Brewer might be American's best ball handler, I say, as he turns it over. Parsons comes up with it, looking for an outlet. Finds Boynton, who drives in. Wild shot goes up. And coming down with it is Munoz. Here's Munoz racing up the floor. Good pass and a look to Brewer for the layup. That's better ball handling when you can just reach up and lay the ball in. Right before that, he dribbled right into a double team, which all of AU's guards have had trouble with today. 13 points now for Brewer. American needs a stop defensively. They need several. with an open shot and he hits it. It's one of those shots where you just say nice if you're the other team. So after a wild possession the last time down the floor, that time more in control and a nice open shot. You see a big difference, don't you? Good pass there. In and out. Well, they knew. He goes up and it counts. I have figured out how to get American going in this game. Just put somebody on Moldovanu, make it a difficult shot, he's going to hit it. He's going to hit it every time. You know, the, you guys talk in baseball about bailing your teammate out when a guy leaves a guy on third base with less than two outs and then the guy comes, the next hitter comes up with two outs and gets a hit. Moldovanu bailed Rebicki out there because he missed the open layup, but Moldovanu is able to get the weak side rebound and score. Four for 13 shooting, and all four have been contested shots, and he misses on the free throw. He was too open. 
the free throw line. In their loss against Central Florida, 64 possessions. And the Florida coaches, after breaking down the film, felt they had 34 poor offensive possessions. And we're seeing a little bit of that the last couple of times down the court. What Billy Donovan is talking about. You're looking for consistency offensively in your approach. Macklin can't get it to fall a little short. And another fast break. All the way down, another lay-in by Hendra. Again, AU surprising Florida by running a little bit there, pushing the ball, and they didn't get back in transition defense. That's something that will be discussed in the film room this week, I promise. Seven points and a half for Hendra. Hendra didn't score in the first half, so he's come to life here in the second. Will begin now in the backcourt for Florida. Shot clock is at 10. Good defensive time down the floor for American. In the corner it goes, and won't go, and a push. Parsons going to be called for the push. And that's just an unlucky foul as the ball hung up on the rim and in trying to stamp it. His 10 points have had the first six minutes of the game, but they've had a balanced performance. Parsons and Lumpkins with five rebounds apiece. But I think the key here has been Florida's defense. And that's why you see AU trying to push the ball a little bit because Florida's played such good half-court defense and almost a 10-second violation there that AU almost has to push the ball just to try to get good shots. Wilbekin is all over Luptak. Whistle and a foul, and it goes. Again, nothing wrong with Murphy's defense there. When I see a shot like that, where Murphy did everything right, kept the guy in front of him, forced him into a tough shot, I think of something Dean Smith said years ago when his North Carolina team was trailing Clemson 16-2 early in a game. He pointed down at the Clemson bench and said, you know, they give scholarships too. And that was a play where a scholarship player, Moldovainu, beat a scholarship player, Murphy. Just a good play. And then all of a sudden, seven-point game. AU showing zone again. 7-0 run for the Eagles. Defense picking up here by the Eagles. Macklin knocked away, Parsons open. And it's short, and a whistle and a foul, and that's gonna go against Florida. But Macklin on another push off to get position. You know, when you see a guy get a rebound that easily on the offensive end of the floor, there's usually a reason for it. And Macklin pushed off, as you said, gets caught and foul. And with his third foul, Macklin heads to the bench. Will you get back in? I think he headed to the bench, not so much because of the third foul, but because of the way he fouled. <laughs> Donovan, not think happy about that. that. <laughs> Another big possession for America in Moldovanu. A little too strong. Well, that would have been a big shot for AU if it had gone in. Walker the other way. He hits for three. Big basket for the Gators. A uh, huge change. Their lead could have been four. Instead, it's ten. And that's what the three does. You live by it, you die by it. AU died by it there, and Florida lived by it. That's the fourth three-point field goal hit by Walker. He's four for six. His partner Boynton has been quiet today offensively, but Walker shooting the ball very well. Brewer can't get it to go. Parsons another board. Right-handed shooter going left there. Always a difficult shot. If I was Florida, I'd push it right now because I think AU's a little bit tired here. They've been playing very hard on defense the last few minutes. And they do not substitute as frequently exactly. as Florida has. There's Murphy open for the shot. Battle inside, you get with the board, he goes down. Fouls on Brewer there. Good job by you get getting position. Six, seven freshman coming off the bench. You get is one of those players that all coaches love. He does the dirty work and he doesn't mind. Let everyone else get the, the headlines, let everyone else get the scoring looks. I'll go in and bag it around off the bench. That's what you want from guys who come in off the bench. Just tell me what to do, coach, and has to shoot off balance. 
he hasn't missed. American had trailed by 16. They got it to within seven. Now it's 10. And a wide open shot there for Eric Murphy. Well, AU trying to overplay on that inbound to get a steal. And Murphy taking advantage. And someone needs to come and help left tack here. Boynton all over. Boynton back in the game now with some fresh legs. Wilbekin stays in, so three guards in there at the moment for Florida. Shot clock now at eight. Well, the Vano has it knocked away at a whistle and a foul. Again, Moldovan is showing patience there, making it into the lane, making a shot fake, and drawing the foul. Now can he convert? One out of two isn't good enough at this point in the game if you get to the line when you're AU, because they haven't been on the line very much. Moldovan is a 75% free throw shooter for the year. That's just the seventh attempt. He makes the first. They're now five out of seven. Munoz back in the game. He missed, as I said, he missed the Columbia game a week ago. He had con concussion syndrome from concussion symptoms, I can say that, from a fall he had taken. They held him out because, as we all know nowadays, you don't take any chances with any kind of symptoms like that. And he hits on both. Well, it's a 10-point game. Jeff Jones trying to get him as many defensive rests as he can here so he'll be fresh for offense. Seven points in the last four minutes now for Moldovanu, who goes to the bench for a breather. Hey, he's showing zone again. Jeff Jones switching defenses a lot throughout this game. And Parsons made the classic mistake against the zone. Dribbled. And he started out patiently passing the ball. He got impatient. He dribbled right into the teeth of the zone, and he travels. Well, that was a quick visit to the bench for Moldovanu. He's back in with the... Eagles in possession. Jeff will go offense, defense with Moldovano as much as he can. His old coach, Terry Holland, more or less invented the concept of late game offense, defense substitutions back in the 70s in Virginia. First coach I ever saw. Inside pass and a good look to Brewer. Really nice back cut by Brewer there. And now Billy Donovan wants to talk to his players because he didn't like what he saw the last two possessions. In Florida with the ball and they have an eight point lead. Let's see if they work the ball better around the perimeter here. Shot is short. Morton can't get it to fall. Rebound inside by Parsons. He goes up strong and he's fouled. So another timeout on the floor. It's an eight point game, 7.46 to go. Come back as Parsons goes to the line and hits on the first. First point in a long while for Parsons, but that was a big play, him getting that offensive rebound off the point and miss. And of course, the problem with the zone there as he gets his own rebound, that's not boxing out the shooter. That's one of the first things you say when you go to the line. I've got the shooter. Nobody got the shooter there. But the original rebound Parsons got, two offensive rebounds in that sequence, was probably because it's tougher to rebound out of a zone, as we all know. 11-point game. Gators in control. Munoz back in, has the ball. Bothered by Walker. Maldivenu. Again, too strong. He's having a tough time from the stripe today. And oh, there's Hendra again going left hand. That's what I was talking about, his athletic ability there. He doesn't look quick because he's stocky, but he is strong, and he can put the ball on the floor and go to the goal. Nice play there, getting high for that rebound. He's out of New York City. That looked like a schoolyard move. That was a New York kid showing some toughness. Didn't expect that necessarily from an actor, so. Nine points in the half for Hendra. My dad ran an opera company, so I can say that kind of thing. Really? That was a foul on Lumpkin's reach. So that's where you got all your culture from. <laughs> the little that I had certainly came from my parents. You go, nice up and under move there. And you're right, that is a New York City move. 
Going to the goal with the right hand, switching it to the left hand under the basket. I can also say that as a New York. Walker drives the lane and hits. There's another New Yorker. Price the King, Kenny Walker out of the Bronx. Louis Donovan, another New Yorker, Long Island kid, recruiting up there. There's a bump. You know what? I think that's the right call. See if we have a replay, but I think Rick Randall called that right. Looked like Lufthansa put his shoulder into it. Unlike anything the Washington Redskins did today. Oh, yep, that's a good call. Those of you who stuck it out till the bitter end with the Redskins, we welcome you. <laughs> Tough loss for them and a big win for the Giants in that very competitive NFC East. Well, the Redskins can start preparing for the draft. Macklin misses. Rebounded by Tyus. Too Man many offensive the rebounds. Again, that's the issue here. And they were back in man-to-man -man here, but they still gave up an offensive rebound. And Wilbekin for three. The freshman off the bench. Out of Gainesville. He stayed home. Kids don't do that very often in college basketball these days, but he did. And Kenny Boynton stayed from Pompano Beach State in Florida. And yeah, Wobekid is just 17 years old. He graduated high school early and already playing Division I at a major conference. Reminds me a little bit of Tim Duncan, who was 17 as a freshman at Wake Forest. Had a decent career. So walk inside and a walk haul on Stephen Lumpkins. Of course, there's another guard out of Florida that Billy Donovan was hoping to get, Austin Rivers, son of Doc Rivers. Thought he had him. He committed verbally as a high school freshman, changed his mind, and committed earlier this year to Duke. So Mike Krzyzewski feels he evened the score getting Austin Rivers after losing Kenny Boynton. Boynton nice inside. Pass. Very good pass to Tyus, who goes up left-handed. And there's that athletic ability. There's no way they're going to be able to stop that. You're absolutely right. But one of the most underrated skills in basketball is the really good pass into the post. And that was a classic example of it. Lumpkins goes baseline and left-handed lays it in. I'd like to see more of that from Steve Lumpkins. A very capable young player. Had a good year last year as a sophomore. Jeff Jones expecting big things of him this year. 14-point game, American cannot afford to trade baskets. And they're back to the zone because they can't deny that post pass in a man-to-man. Now -man. to Tyus, goes up strong and a foul. Well, he didn't deny it very well in the zone there either. No choice but the foul. So Alex Tyus out of St. Louis, Missouri. There's good recruiting for you. Well, when you win national championships, you can recruit nationally. Because everybody sees you on TV, knows who you are, and you can go out and say, hey, you come play for us, there's a good chance you'll be in the Final Four. Billy Donovan's been in three of them since 2000. Tyus hits on the first. Blake points out that Mike Miller went to Florida out of South Dakota. So Billy Donovan will travel far and wide. Walker's back in the game as Tyus hits on both. So nice when you have a big guy who can make free throws. Munoz with Tyus on him. His league is, lead is crept back out to 16, and a lot of it's been the offensive rebounding. And you wonder if AU's legs aren't just a little bit tired. They've been forced to play so hard to stay competitive in this game. Lumpkins inside. It's rejected by Macklin, who's back in there. Again rejected. Two in a row. And here comes Walker. Walker to point for three. Won't go. Good play by Lumpkins there. Gets the shot blocked twice. Doesn't pout at all. Runs the court and gets the rebound. Munoz, a running right-hander, won't go. Again, not many players can drive left, shoot right. The really, really top ones can, but most of them can. Now Florida can milk this clock. Look for that kind of shot. 
Well, Macklin with the hook, it goes, and the foul will take a timeout. When we come back, Macklin goes to the line, and the Gators in the open of our triple header in control. Balance and depth of this Florida team, four of the five starters are in double figures. Boynton, the other starter, has not scored. However, he has seven assists and zero turnovers, contributing by dishing the ball. Well, and if you have that kind of stat line as a point guard, your coach is going to be very happy with you. And what Boynton has done is he has to try to force things. 65-46, biggest lead for the Gators. You know, wearing down American lead. And that shot won't go. That was just good defense by Boynton, forcing Hendra to change his shot midair. Walker slows it down a bit. Boynton's an example of a kid who people are going to talk about coming out early. And he really could use another year or two in college. Fine talent, got an NBA body, but he needs to work on consistency. So highly recruited coming out of high school that people automatically, you know, the day you step on campus as a freshman, people are talking about what your pro career is going to be like, which I think is a disservice to the kids. Let them, as Billy Donovan said, let them enjoy their college careers first. Yeah, Billy Donovan doesn't seem to be the type of coach. He's very much like Gary Williams in this regard. He doesn't necessarily want those one-and-done guys. You know, let's get guys we can build with. They all want guys who will stay, but they understand there are going to be guys who won't. That if you're going to compete at the highest levels, you occasionally have to recruit that kid. Kyrie Irving is not going to be a Duke for very long, but Mike Krzyzewski couldn't say no to him. He's too good. John Calipari, I think, does look for one of those. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's okay if every year you get a new one. <laughs> and, and, and he gets three of them every year. Billy Donovan called timeout just to get his subs in here. He didn't even bring it to the bench. That's one of those where the coach says, timeout, get the bench in, let's keep playing. He has no desire. A, he wants to get his kids some, some time, and B, he's got no desire to run the score up on Jeff Jones, who's a friend. Wow, McClanahan with the ball. He's a walk-on on this team. Murphy can't get it to fall. You ever notice, Jim, that walk-ons almost always have high GPAs? Yeah. They may not have high PPGs, but they have high GPAs. And then a foul inside. That'll be a block call. Uh, number 24, Casey Prather, who is now in the game. Uh, Parsons is our PM Chang's hungriest player of the game. And he was hungry in particular in the first half. Well, I wouldn't mind some PM Chang's right now either. Is there a hungriest announcer of the game? Uh, okay. Uh, okay. I may fight you for uh, it. <laughs> we split. Co hungriest announcer. Somebody stepped in the lane there. Lane violation as Parsons can smile on the bench. So they go on the road for one game. Gators arrived here last night. Gators and Temple staying in town. Of course, the other four schools local. And uh, Billy Donovan had a chance to see his son William, who's a freshman and Catholic. Catholic beat Goucher last night. Jeff Jones went to see his son Jeffrey, who's a high school sophomore playing a tournament up here last night. Jeffrey Jones is six foot six. I don't think he has his father's ball handling skills. And speaking of ball handling, that was a lot. Rather, was called for the turnover. Simon McCormick comes back in. Simon McCormick is the guy Jeff Jones needs production out of. Wayne Simon on the floor for the first time today, and he throws it away. Wilbekin behind the back pass, goes off the foot and out of bounds off Murphy. That was a 17-year-old pass. And that's another one 
it will probably come up when they review the tape. As in, you don't throw that pass unless you have no choice. Even up 21. And the margin here isn't going to look very good when this game is over. But Jeff Jones, I think, should be pretty happy with the way his team competed today. Prather knocked it away, driving down, off the rim. And Brewer goes off the glass. Nice pass by Wayne Simon, the second. What you like to see about that play was off times when a kid comes in the bench, off the bench late, the way Simon does. He wants to score. But he was willing to give the ball up to the starter to get the basket. Now Florida just run his clock out. 17 now for Brewer to lead American. 